بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم today we will start to discuss the anatomy of the hand and we will divide the subject into multiple lecture and we will start with first lecture about the hand which will be discussed in it the bony skeleton of the hand from the anatomical point of view skeleton of the hand is composed of three parts proximal part which formed by eight bones called carpal bones middle part which forms of another different type of bones called metacarpal bones and third part which called the bones of phalanges now we will discuss each group in details first group carpal bones the carpal bone of the hand are small bones represent the proximal part of the skeleton of the hands they are eight in number eight bone and these eight bone they are arranged in two rows two lines each line or each row composed of four bones the first row which is called proximal row of the carpal bones this row is composed of the following bones which are arranged from lateral to medial first one is called scaphoid bone this is the largest of these carpal bones curved in shape curved proximally articulate with distal end of radius at the wrist joint distally it articulates with the distal row of the carpal bone especially the trapezium and trapezoid bone it has prominent process on its anterior surface which called tubercle of the scaphoid bone and proximal to this a narrow part which called neck of scaphoid bone second bone in the proximal row called lunate bone lunate bone this bone it articulate proximally with radius distally with distal row of carpal bone captate and hamid and on each side it will articulate with nearby carpal bones which means scaphoid and tracheotrum an important note that these two bones scaphoid and lunate they form the main 
articular structure in the wrist joint distally because the wrist joint is composed distally mainly of scaphoid and lunate and proximally distal end of the radius third bone carpal bone called tracheotrum and this bone articulate mainly with surrounding carpal bones which means lunate hamate and pisiform the last of the proximal row which is the most medial bone is called pisiform bone so the proximal row of the carpal bone from medial to lateral composed of scaphoid lunate tracheotrum and pisiform bone second row of the carpal bone which is the distal row and this row composed also of another four bones and these are arranged from lateral to medial first trapezium second trapezoid bone third captate and fourth hamate bone the hamate bone on its ventral surface a prominent bony process called hook of hamate this is an important anatomical mark because it give attachment to the flexor retinaculum these four bones they have multiple synovial joints between each another called intercarpal bone uh, sorry intercarpal joints and also they have another type of synovial joints with metacarpal bones these joints called carpal metacarpal joints next to the carpal bone is the middle group of the bone of the hand which are called metacarpal bones they are five in numbers and they are enumerated from lateral to medial first metacarpal bone second metacarpal bone third metacarpal bone fourth metacarpal bone and fifth metacarpal bone these metacarpal bones they are long cylindrical bones possess two ends proximal end which will articulate with the distal row of the carpal bones at the carpal metacarpal joints and distal end which articulate with phalanges at the metacarpal phalangeal joints so they have five carpal metacarpal joints and five metacarpal phalangeal joints and each metacarpal bone between these two end proximal distal end and proximal end each bone possess an elongated shaft called the shaft of the metacarpal bones should know an important note these metacarpal bones are enumerated from lateral to medial first second third fourth 
and fifth metacarpal bones. Now, the third group of the bones of the hand, they are the phalanges. The hand possess five phalanges, five digits, sorry, five digits or five fingers. Each finger is composed of three phalanges, proximal phalanx, distal phalanx, and in between, that's the intermediate phalanx. Except the first finger, that's the thumb, which composed only of two phalanges, proximal phalanx and distal phalanx. These phalanges, they are articulated proximally with metacarpal bones at the metacarpophalangeal joints and between each other another type of joints which called interphalangeal joints. The phalanges they will form the fingers or the digits and the fingers in the hand they are enumerated also from lateral to medial so we have first finger second finger third finger fourth finger and fifth fingers also each finger in addition that it has a number also it have a name so another name for the first finger is the thumb for the second finger is the index finger for the third finger is the middle finger the fourth finger is called ring finger the fifth is called little finger as in the metacarpal bone the phalanges also they are elongated bones having two ends one is proximal end which will articulate with the metacarpal bone at the metacarpophalangeal joint and the other is the distal ends and in between these two ends there is an elongated shaft and this is the feature is applicable for all phalanges the most important notes you should remember every time that the fingers are enumerated from lateral to medial first second third fourth and fifth fingers thank you